Hi, everyone. Welcome again to another financial analysis video. Myself, Moeed Amin and uh, Ted Wayman. Today, we're looking at Rolls-Royce, as you can see from the logo in front of you. Um, but before we get into that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, especially if you've made the request um, for, for this particular type of business that you want us to analyze, you'll get the notification. So let's dive straight in. Uh, Rolls-Royce. So a lot of you will know Rolls-Royce as a, a very famous uh, British business. Um, you would have probably seen some of the cars around, uh, but they're much more than that. So Rolls-Royce are in the business of, um, uh, what's it called, uh, power and propulsion. So they manufacture power and propulsion, basically engines, and they do so for uh, civil engineering, such as uh, aeroplanes. They do so for the defense industry. They even have power propulsion engines um, and grids for uh, yachts, for example. Um, so very, very big business um, that has been around for a long time, as you can see, established in 1904. Now, uh, I want to thank one of our viewers for recommending uh, this video. Uh, and here's your video for you. Um, so Kame asked us to look at that as well as another company we've done in the past called Bidstack. One thing to note, and, and we've uh, placed this on this slide here, just so that in your investment thesis, you're aware of this. And we will stick around, actually, because we will go on to talk about this in more detail in relation to the fu uh, fundamental financials. But essentially, the company uh, pumps in a huge amount of money into developing, you know, in terms of R&D and manufacturing the engines. So essentially, it doesn't really make much money when they sell the engines to aircraft manufacturers. Actually, they lose money. Where they make the majority of their money is based on the long-term service agreements, so repairs, et cetera, that they have. Um, and, and the point to note about this at the moment is, their shares are down by about 70% than they were two years ago. So could present an opportunity for you. Again, stick around because we're going to be start looking at the fundamental financials and how it probably connects to the, um, to the uh, to share price movement. But just worth noting so that you're aware of the context for what we're going to discuss today. Um, and just on that note on the share price, if you invested five years ago, you would have lost money. Uh, I think to the tune of about 50%. However, if you'd invested a year ago, uh, you would have made around 268% um, capital gain. Now, as we always say, uh, don't try to time the market. If Warren Buffett says he can't do it, then I think most of us can't. Uh, it's a mugs game, as Ted calls it. Uh, but it's worth at least noting that change. It's interesting to look at. So uh, Ted, let's let's dive straight in and uh, share with our viewers what we found about the finances of this uh, this long established institutional business. Absolutely. So I'm um, well. Good to see you, Moeed, and thank you very much. Yeah. Once again, we are going to be looking at the financial analysis, uh, and <coughs> as a caveat, that means that this is a backward-looking presentation by its very nature. The numbers will tell us where. Rolls-Royce has been in the past, not necessarily where they are going. So that little comment, uh, which was in the Money Week um, recently, uh, taken from the Daily Telegraph, as we saw, Daily Telegraph says that, you know, we think they're potentially uh, going to be making money because of the, uh, the move to actually providing the services rather than actually developing the products. Um, and therefore, maybe they are an opportunity. So we will be looking at the past performance. And then uh, uh, as part of this past performance, maybe you would be thinking, um, um, as an investor, should I be adding these to my portfolio? Don't forget, this isn't just for investors, though. This is for people who want to learn how to read and interpret financial information. Uh, maybe you're looking to supply to them. Maybe you're looking to join Rolls-Royce. Maybe you just want to understand um, uh, financial information. So here is their annual report and accounts 2020. Again, quite out of date. We're now in October 2021 at the time of filming this. Um, and if you look through their annual report, you'll find lots and lots of information about the business um, and who they are, what they do, what their business model is, how their strategy is changing, who the people in charge are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what we're going to do is whiz all the way down through that. You can read that at your own leisure uh, simply by downloading it off their website. Um, uh, 
what I'm going to be doing is looking at the financial numbers uh, and they are available on page 106 of this um, uh, this uh, report. So uh, as a general rule, about halfway through, you'll notice there's 218 pages and we're on page 106. So what do we see? Here is the consolidated income statement. And the first thing we see at the top line, a big fall in revenue, and that will obviously be driven primarily through COVID, for example. So um, as a result of COVID, uh, uh, orders would have been cancelled, um, et cetera, et cetera. And this has caused a massive um, uh, a loss in revenue. Cost of sales uh, are still very high, and therefore they make a loss, operating loss, down from an operating, sorry, gross profit um, of 6%, so still very, very low margin in 2019, uh, and then they tip into a loss. Um, there's the research and development. So interesting enough, while they're in a loss, the R&D costs have gone up uh, from previous years. And, and that's what the Daily Telegraph is really saying. They're saying, look, you know, we expect these numbers to go down and the cost of sales to go down relative to the revenue. We should start to see some pretty hefty, uh, some pretty uh, uh, beneficial numbers coming through. But that's not what they experienced in 2020. Um, there's the loss for the year. Um, uh, and after the financing, so they've got some debt uh, and they have to pay the interest. Um, the total loss for the year, about three point uh, two billion pounds. OK, so a fairly hefty loss. And you'll notice they even were making a loss um, in the previous year. OK, so this is a loss making business and they book a very big loss on 2020 based really uh, on the pandemic. Um, let's leave the income statement there and move on to the balance sheet. Um, so here is the balance sheet um, uh, in terms of their assets. So the non-current assets are the things that they need to run the business. There they are. It's about 15 billion of non-current assets. Um, they're going to have some intangible assets up there. So some of that will be trademarks. Um, some of it will be um, a goodwill, for example, and a lot of property, plant and equipment. Those are the two really big numbers that kind of jump out at us. And in terms of the non, sorry, the current assets, um, inventories, which is their kind of their stock. Um, they've got some trade receivables um, and they've got some cash in the bank. Those are the really the big numbers. That's what we'd expect. Uh, and that's what we see. These contract assets, these are kind of, uh, these are, you know, a bit like work in progress. So, um, uh, you know, where they're building um, uh, uh, engines for, um, uh, for clients. So it's a kind of almost a part, you know, a bit like inventories effectively. So total assets, um, 29 billion, a little bit down uh, from 32 billion in the previous year. Um, going on to the liabilities side. So scrolling down a little bit, here we go. Here's the liabilities. Um, First of all, we see the current liabilities, 13.7 billion. Uh, that's this number here. Um, so there's the current liabilities. Really not a, a liquidity, doesn't look like a, a massive problem. Uh, they've got 14.7 billion of current assets, 13.7 billion of current liabilities. Quite a lot of trade and other payables in there. Um, a little bit of borrowings. These borrowings, they're probably going to refinance, I would expect. Um, so liquidity doesn't look too much of an issue. Um, and in terms of the non-current or long-term liabilities, um, really the big number here is this six billion of debt. Now you'll notice uh, that the debt has increased. Okay, so there's been an increase in the borrowings uh, of this business, and that may be a little bit of an alarm bell. I'm not absolutely certain, but it's just kind of you know, if you're a loss-making business and you start to take on more debt, you're like, mm, are you going to be able to afford that debt? Yet, there's got to be uh, uh, some fairly um, uh, uh, detailed um, presentations to the debt providers because um, they'll have wanted to see, you know, the strength of the future cash flows and the projections. And that will be, you know, not only contained within this document, but also within some more sort of proprietary um, uh, uh, presentations to those debt investors. So it looks to me like these guys, you know, they've taken on more debt. Um, and uh, I, I'm guessing, although we shouldn't rely on it, I'm guessing that the debt investors will have done a little bit of homework and will have confidence that this company is not going to go anywhere. What we do notice is this number here. 
okay and this number here is the net liabilities the net liabilities means that for rolls royce their liabilities are greater than their assets so if this company ceases trading the people who've lent them the money are probably not going to get all of their money back I mean, there may be security uh, uh sitting behind that um so you know this is this these this company is technically insolvent okay now you're allowed to trade if you're technically insolvent you're not allowed to trade if you're actually insolvent but you are allowed to trade if you're technically insolvent as long as you can meet your financial obligations as they fall due that's not the case by the way for banks or insurance companies which have to have a positive net assets so these guys net um uh, uh net liabilities um uh, on the balance sheet a negative balance sheet as we call it and we can see that through the equity um, so here's the equity, negative equity, and it's really driven by accumulated losses. So they've, they're sitting on losses, but don't forget losses. That's backward looking. That's what's happened in the past. Uh, and if you are an investor, you should be thinking about what's going to happen in the future. So the real question is, you know, are they strong enough to survive? You know, are they going to fall over um, or are they going to carry on um, uh, trading? Um, I believe, uh, and uh, I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments but i believe that rolls royce um has had to be bailed out in the past so uh, rolls royce i'm pretty sure has gone bust in the past uh, but because it's such a kind of iconic um a, a business um, sort of part of the british psyche um it's been bailed out um uh, and and uh, and nationalized and then reprivatized it's happened in the past it may happen again in the future in which case you may lose your entire investment um so here's the cash flow. In fact, let's look at the movement in equity before we do that. So um, the movement in equity, uh, a little bit further down, if I can find it. Yeah, here we go. So here's the movement in equity, just confirming um, this kind of these losses. So uh, starting with a loss uh, at the beginning of 2020, uh, they make a loss during the year and they end up with uh, a big, uh, an even bigger loss at the end of 2020. Um, and again, um, you know, that that's a kind of been a, been the picture in the previous year as well so retained losses uh so this company is very much funded through the shareholders actual physical investment the cash flow um also isn't looking too healthy so negative cash flow for 2020 now positive cash flow in the previous year but negative cash flow in this year so driven a lot of it driven through you know they're making a loss and therefore they're generating negative cash um, uh, and, and that's, you know, kind of, you know, really where the, um, uh, you know, that is a cause for concern, because if you're burning cash, you can't afford to do that forever. Um, so negative cash flow, little bit of investment going on. There's the investment uh, in the kind of, you know, in future of the business. Um, and then the financing on which is positive financing. And that positive financing is driven through. Let me just change the color so we can see it. Uh, so it's driven through. Uh, the issuing of debt. So you'll notice that they've they've borrowed um, uh, they've borrowed 4.8 billion and they've repaid 2.8 billion, which means that they've taken on additional debt of 2 billion, and that's reflected in the increase in debt in the balance sheet. And you'll also notice that there is a share issue they undertook. So they've actually raised money by issuing shares. Um, so debt and equity together um, to kind of fund the business to you know really. Um, uh, you know, this is funding for survival. This is not really kind of funding for investment or opportunity. So there's the kind of there's the um, the the uh, the 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 accounts. Now we don't usually do this, um, Moed. We usually kind of say, well, look, you know, there's the financial statements, and and that's the latest piece of information. But I I did want to just sort of pull up. Um, so uh, these are the 2021 half year results. Um, not a full set of financial statements, but I did want to. Um, highlight a few things that kind of uh, uh, jumped out at me um, looking at these uh, these half year results. So first of all, um, this is a kind of high level view um, of, of how they're performing. You'll notice that um, they've made this, 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 this profit from operating activity. So it looks to me like 2021, they, they have or are returning to profitability certainly the gross profit is 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 up they're operating at a gross margin of 21 percent that looks very healthy um they've got uh, uh the, the 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 bottom line profit is is good you can see these negatives uh, in the previous year um where they were you know they were really booking that that big loss effectively so 
it looks to me like you know they have turned the corner for the first six months and they're saying look you know the, the restructuring we've done that the, 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 the movement of the arm um, of the business you know it, it is starting to pay dividends um a couple of other things these are just on the segmental analysis the other things um to notice are they have a specific uh, uh section here on improvement to free cash flow um and you know really thinking about you know the, the negative cash flow they experienced in the previous year you know they are very aware that 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 you know that can't last and that they are they are addressing it and so what we see here is the the, the cash flow from 2020 um we don't have to worry too much about exactly what this is telling us but basically the cash flow from uh the the negative cash flow uh, from 2020 this is the first half of 2020 is well it's not a positive cash flow but it's less negative so what they are doing is say look we are going in the right direction we are working with it in order to kind of you know to to to, to start generating positive cash um, and the other thing uh, I wanted to just highlight was again this comment here rebuilding the balance sheet and by rebuilding the balance sheet what they're trying to do is to kind of um, is is you know they've got the you know they've taken on this additional amount of debt but they are looking to um, you know to 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 dispose to generate cash uh, to pay down that debt um, and to increase their cash pile so you know these guys are very aware of the cash flow of the amount of debt they've got um, you know and and this is a kind of you know you know they're trying to convince us that um, you know they've got it all in hand and that they are you know doing something about it so to speak so there is our um, analysis of the financial statements here is the share price as we mentioned um so the um the the uh the actual market cap uh, of the company is about 12 billion um now obviously the the balance sheet is negative so you know that market cap is is all goodwill by definition um uh, the pe ratio um, obviously, if you were to compare it to 2020, it would be zero. The P ratio right now is 3.6 times. OK, now 3.6 times. You remember we looked at Tesla. Uh, Tesla once was a thousand times earnings. This is you're only paying 3.6 times earnings. OK, that's relatively cheap. Uh, uh, this looks like a potential bargain. It only needs three years before you get your money back. Effectively, that's what it's saying. So this looks to me like it could be a very, very cheap company. Now, it doesn't come without its caveats. There's a lot of debt. Uh, there's a negative cash flow. Uh, there's a negative balance sheet. So there's lots of caveats. Yet, if you buy into the underlying story, if you think about the kind of the value of the business, if you think that it can actually reclaim its heady heights of 2013 14, then maybe uh, this looks an opportunity. And maybe we talk about market timing. Um, obviously, if you have been investing, uh, if you were you know, very, very clever um, or lucky, should I say, uh, and you'd invested here, then you'd be sitting on a nice, tidy profit. But it looks to me like you haven't missed the boat. Okay. This is still, you know, if this company can get anywhere close to kind of, you know, its previous highs. Um, then you know there's there's everything to play for so it looks to me like you know the daily telegraph is probably right um uh it looks like it could be an opportunity um maybe not for the faint-hearted uh, and it will be a rocky ride um but i think that uh this is you know probably worth worth a bit of speculation but i wouldn't sell my house uh, and put it into rolls royce shares let's put it like that yeah, very interesting. And, and of course, these are just our opinions, but we would really love to hear from any uh, engineers who uh, happen to be able to share some some detailed information about some of the technologies that obviously without giving away anything that's confidential, uh, as we had from Tesla as well, where we had some engineers that wanted to share their opinions about uh, the technology. So this will be great to see and uh, will be interesting to maybe come back to this business maybe in a few years time, who knows, uh, and see if, uh, if those opinions were correct. But uh, for now, thank you, everyone. Again, like, share, subscribe. If you have any businesses you would like us to analyze for you, whatever the reason is, whether it's investment, work, or you're trying to do business with them, do leave a note in the comment section, and we will get around to your video as soon as we can. Uh, so thank you again, Ted. Thank you also, everyone, for viewing. And until the next video, bye for now. See you later, Marie.